Okay, we are back in here with the second game in the finals of the It's Gosu Dota 2 Amateur Arena, featuring Aquarium and Team Magikarp. We did see the first victory being picked up by Team Magikarp in only 17 minutes and 31 seconds. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely went to town on that game. The Shadow Fiend did put out a lot of momentum, and uh, just their trialing up top was did exactly what it needed to do, and got some kills off on the tower. That Illuminate started doing a lot of damage as the uh, laning phase went on, and with that they were able to dive a little bit behind the towers and pick up some really good kills. And yeah, there was just, I think I feel like Aquarium was kind of scrambling to stay on top of things, but uh, hopefully they can, you know, bounce back on into it and show us some of the awesome plays and awesome team fights that they've been showing us up against in the other matchups. So, game two going on through of this best of three, and we'll see if they can pull back into it. But Bounty Hunter is actually going to be the first pickup for Aquarium, so this could be really cool. This could be... This is the, the first game where he's actually not been banned. <laughs> exactly. Batrider definitely being banned for Team Magikarp because they do not have the first pick available, and they don't want to obviously hand it away. So there you go. But all the same, they do pick up a Chaos Knight Leshrac, which, as we saw last game, is a very powerful combo in disables and damage. I think there's just a sort of a common understanding of what heroes are good at the time at least because we do see the Keeper Light, the Keeper Light, the Chaos Light, and the Ruby pickup once again. Just uh, immediate pickups. I guess people are just really wanting to ban them because of their s them being so strong. So, yeah, once again, Team Magic Card picking up the Chaos Light might roll them out in the tri lane again. Exactly, exactly. Now the question is, do they want to go for the Queen of Pain? Queen of Pain, most of the games, has been extremely effective. Some of them, she hasn't really gotten enough gold or experience to get rolling, uh, especially in that yeah. one, the Shadow Fiend was really good at staying on top of her, and uh, she didn't get that much support. Uh, one of, I think Shadow Fiend's one of his greatest weakness is that he has obviously no escape mechanism. If he's playing aggressively, he can do a really good job, but if you go two versus one against him, as in a gank coming from Tiny or something, of course he's generally busy farming and trying to... Uh, get his GPM up, but if you had even a Rubik coming on in uh, earlier on in the laning phase, I think they could have done some really good 2 versus 1 aggression. Unfortunately, yeah. that didn't pan out, and Quap kind of got dominated. That's exactly what they needed to do, was just gank him a few times in the early game, where he's super weak before he actually gets the ne necromastery up and running for real. And uh, that's all it takes. I mean, he's so easy to kill. It, it's, he has like 600 health early game, so it's, it's no challenge whatsoever to kill him. You just need to go down there and do it. Most well, certainly so. so it They're like, really going into the serve time here. Mm -hmm, yeah, Dyer really wants to be very careful about this selection. They have a lot of options on hand if they want to round out their trialing with a Jakiro pickup, if they want to go for that Quap for the mid. Things like that are running through their mind. I'm absolutely positive of that. They also have to keep in mind whatever they pick up, they have to be able to counteract the Bounty Hunter in detection. So have a number five that has enough gold to be throwing a lot of dollars around into sentries and mm. dust. But they go for the Enigma first time up against a Rubik. How do you feel about that? I kind of feel like Rubik's hard counter. That's just. That's a large risk, I agree, but I kind of really like the Enigma pickup because I've just been waiting to see him all night. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, he's such a great hero, and he just has, well, arguably the best ultimate in the entire game in terms of team fight crowd, crowd control. And it's just that's a great pick. I mean, definitely the only problem is you really need to catch Rubik inside of that, obviously. Absolutely. I mean, the. That's a, yeah. The Chaos Bolt 4 Second Stun might enable him to just go with it without landing it on the Enigma, but you are putting a lot of bank in on that. So I think, yeah, generally speaking, the Rubik is going to force the Enigma to always be very, very cautious about where he use, uses it, because it could be actually more of a curse than a gift if he's able to throw out a black hole, catch on two, but then immediately after, get his entire team, or just yeah, even a few of them, black hole in return. Gives a lot of momentum swing for Radiant, yeah. I completely agree. I mean, also just the last track pickup with the KSI is great, but also just the last track with the Enigma is also great. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the Team Magikarp's picks here. Of course, also Team Aquarium. But in terms of Team Magikarp, to see what they are going to pick, if they're going to synergize with Enigma or just go for a general all-round team. Because, I mean, last track alone is going to absolutely dominate once people are in Enigma Ultimate. It's just landing a stun on everybody, his lighting on everybody, his ult on everybody. It's, just, it's so incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will comment as far as the synergy between Enigma and Leshrac is really, really powerful. You have the Pulse Nova. Uh, the Edict and Lightning are pretty good, and the Split Earth to follow it up after they're all kind of clustered together. All good abilities, but it's really the Pulse Nova that shines in that four-second period, radiating aiding out all that AoE magic damage can really just obliterate the opposition really, really swiftly um, with them caught in it. I'd love to see like some kind of crazy combos going off 
uh, maybe like a Sand King to follow through as well with the Epicenter. The things like that are really, really potent, but again, you have to watch what you hand to the Rubick, especially since he has that Null Field aura. If Rubick, will, who will probably be going for the solo mid, gets some experience advantage early on, that Null Field will be wreaking havoc. Uh, the 20% magic resistance uh, going on to everybody on the team uh, will really limit how much damage Lusher I can do, especially if Rubick opts for something like a Pipe of Insight, which he just may. Definitely. I mean, on, on a side note here, we do see the bands. Are, nothing special about the bands in that sense. I mean, it's, it's more or less been the same bands all night. Though we do see the Antimage band going up in Team Magikarp. I'm actually surprised that we have not seen Antimage pick up this entire evening because he seems to me as still being one of the strongest carries in the entire game. But it just, I guess it seems like uh, neither of the teams prefer to pick him. There are two, sure I would have to say there are two main reasons why Anti-Mage was banned out right there. Um, majorly Lashrak, he builds a lot of tank ability, but also a lot of mana, trying to keep that Pulse Nova going and going and going. Bloodstone, perfect example of that. Um, with that, if he gets burned out of all his mana, not only can he not Pulse Nova, but he becomes just this nuclear bomb of mana that Anti-Mage can use with his Mana Void to nuke him down. Yeah, totally. Along with that, the uh, if you cast the Mana Void on Enigma while he's ulting, even if he has BKB, the stun portion of it, the little mini stun, is physical, so it will uh, stop the black hole as well. So two major factors that make it something that the dude don't want to deal with, and they're banning out carries anyways. I agree, and it's definitely a smart ban. I'm just surprised that we haven't seen him been picked up a single time this evening, because he really strikes me as one of the strongest carries in the game, especially with all of the intellect pickups. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd soon, I mean, we see Sand King being picked up by Aquarium and Nick's Assassin being picked up by Team Magikarp. Actually, very surprised about that, but I do respect Nick's Assassin as being one of the best, probably, ganker mid laners in the game, especially with his newest boost to his uh, Spike Carapace. So, really looking forward to seeing where he's going to go. And of course, the Sand King, really solid all round pickup. Good synergy with, I guess, everybody, in a sense. Perhaps. Um, the Dix Assassin is really solid, at least in the laning phase, up against Rubik, who, again, I presume will be going towards mid, although they only have the one ranged uh, support right now, the Keeper of the Light, so we'll have to watch out for that. But Rubik uh, versus Nyx Assassin, Rubik has pretty good base intellect, and Nyx Assassin takes advantage of that uh, very, very effectively with the Mana Burn, doing fivefold the amount of it in Mana Burn, so just getting a couple of those off can burn through the Rubik, and you really can't do anything more with that than a couple auto attacks until he gets his Arcane Boots up. Um, and that's going to be a pretty big deal as far as an advantage ha in the laning phase. But also, you have to keep in mind Bounty Hunter Track uh, locking down the Vendetta. He can't escape with it. He has to initiate with it, and that may not be his preference there. Also, they don't really have any long-range initiation to prevent the Sand King, which was picked up by the Radiant. We didn't even really talk, hit on that very much, but they don't have long-range initiation, so you can't swap him out of his epicenter or just do a quick little hit of magic uh, damage long-range to put his Blink Dagger on cooldown. He's going to get his epicenter off, and it could be very devastating. Gyrocopter. I'm actually very surprised about that pick. I did not at all see that coming. I was expecting a super hard carry now for the pickup on the Aquarium team. But I guess Gyrocopter is a really, one of those really good all-round heroes. I guess his ulti will work really well. If Enigma catches the rest of the team, he can ulti on top. Same with Sand King. I guess they're going for sort of an anti-AoE combo, really hoping to not get focused down by this Enigma here. So, yeah, as far as I see, the Team Magic card, I'm not going to say it's all going to fall or break, like it's all gonna matter about the Enigma ulti because they do have a strong carry lineup. Actually, picking up a Pudge, Pudge. here. Wow. That's interesting. I mean, these are definitely the probably the most varied picks we've seen all night, I guess. Nice to see some, uh, some sprucing up. Yeah, it's a very diverse lineup there. Um, along those lines, may mean that the Nyx Assassin isn't going for the middle lane since Pudge likes to kind of try to go for kind of a snowball effect, steamrolling over the opposition by landing some really good hooks early on, and then when he retroactively picks up that flesh heap, getting a lot of benefit from that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different, there's advantages and disadvantages to that pick up there. Uh, one is lanes, like they don't have the late game carry other than Chaos Knight, and so they're really reliant on making sure that he gets some farm uh, early on, and that means they, they need to keep their lanes strengthened and things along those lines. But um, one other thing I was going to mention, oh, Gyrocopter um, up against an Enigma team. Generally speaking, you would look for a carry that has some kind of stun. Uh, Gyrocopter technically does with his homing missile, but it's so delayed that it can't really interrupt a black hole unless you do it way yeah. beforehand. So if you're actually looking at what can interrupt the Enigma black hole, Rubik, of course, with his own telekinesis or black hole, the Sand King Burrow Strike and the Bounty Hunter uh, with his Shuriken are the only things that come to mind. Actually, one thing that really makes sense about the Gyrocopter pick is the fact that this tri lane down here is just incredibly strong. I mean, the homing missile for setting up the ganks, the Sand King to follow up, and the Keeper of Light to follow up with Luma is just, I mean, it's going to be, if they do it correctly, it's going to be completely 
and one big rape bottom. So, looking forward to see how that works out for them, but I'm very surprised about the giant counter pick. I love that hero, he's very versatile, very fun to play, but yeah, in, in a game like this, uh, not sure how it's going to work out. Yeah, so it's going to be a Nyx Assassin solo bottom. I've never seen an offlane Nyx Assassin. I've seen him support, I've seen him solo mid, but here he is on the offlane, one versus three. Do you think the spike carapace is going to be enough, or is he going to get locked down hard? I'm actually not sure. I mean, that's the one problem is that the spike carapace is probably, probably the biggest that's counter the ever to Gyrocopter, since he, as soon as the homing missile is on him, you know, just pops spike carapace, mm -hmm. and he might get hit by everything, but it, everybody's going to get stunned. So actually a huge counter to two heroes in the lane. Also, Keeper of the Light, as soon as um, Illuminate is popped, he just pops Spike Carapace, and Keeper of the Light will actually kill himself in the process. Sure enough, sure enough. And so, that's going to be pretty beneficial, but he still has to watch himself. And I think that's why they've committed so many wards to him, to make sure that he could actually stay alive and not have to worry about them pulling constantly and getting pulled into a really, really bad spot. I mean, then there's the top lane. We do see a Radiant team rolling out Bounty Hunter as the solo lane against the Chaos Knight. I mean, that's gonna, basically going to be complete free farm for the Chaos Knight. And as soon as. I mean, Banner Hunter is really going to watch out because if he gets caught out of position even slightly and just is revealed, he's probably going to drop instantly. Mm -hmm. So uh, he he is going to have, have to bide his time and not really do all that much, just you know, last it here and there. Yeah, I think it's going to depend a lot on how Leshrac works with his sentry ward action. He obviously doesn't have any at this point in time, and so at the very least, the Bounty Hunter will be able to get in experience range. He won't be able to disjoint any of the stuns incoming, but at least we'll might be able to avoid some of the damage after the fact as the fade time expires and he does actually turn invisible. Enigma's not really going to be ganking for him, so I think he's going to be alright. I mean, he's a good offlane hero in general, but it's going to be really depending on how Leshrac does with those sentries, etc. Um, they do get a uh, Moogle does get a sentry ward trying to uh, get the pull camp rolling and actually gets two wards out of it. So those two wards that was picked up by Nyx Assassin or one of his allies used right there, and um, unfortunately he doesn't have anything preventing them from pulling now. Yeah, I mean, um, really, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing this Nyx Assassin how he is played because just I just I love that hero and just the spike carapace is so interesting against combinations. Um, like this, it's just really looking forward to see if you can actually time it correctly and completely put the trial lane off balance. Uh, in the mid lane, we do see Ruby versus Pudge. Not too much happening. I guess it's really all about landing the, the right hook. And for Pudge, at least, then pretty uh, standard, straightforward. Also, top, not too much action. Top, no kills have gone out yet. We're only two minutes in, so that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mostly Enigma just trying to fire him up, go for that Swirl Ring, possibly either a Mechanism or a Blink Dagger. After that, looks like KY is going to be bottling uh, up with the courier, sending it uh, home and bringing it right back to him. It will take up a lot of the time of courier, especially since it's not flying, when he could have just been looking for the double damage room, but he does not want to lose out on experience. Like I said, getting null field is really, really important for this hero, not only based on the fact that he's up against a Leshrac, but also now up against the Nyx Assassin and his start off with magic damage, I mean the ultimate's physical, but also the rot is all magic damage, and that's actually a decent amount. People underestimate it, but it's like a third of an epicenter constantly. So definitely have to keep that in mind. But nice flank coming in for Creepy Magikarp. Might be able to lock down this Rubik, starting off with a Split Earth, going for the hook to follow. Boom, he is toast. There's no way of getting out of that. Just too much damage incoming. Nice telekinesis, but assuming Marcus Bot doesn't screw this over, nope, he's got him. And that's going to be first blood for the Pudge, which is really, really good for him. Has the boots, possibly the bottle coming along with that very shortly. Yeah, that was a nice gank middle, really going to do a big difference to Rubik, obviously, but yeah, great gank right there. Now moving on through. Hey. Other than that, we uh, the bot lane is not too active right now. I mean, we see if Jar Cop lying around 15 last hits, pretty good. Nick's lying at around one last hit. So I had to keep him zero last hit. So really just ooh. He's actually going aggressive. Gyro, yeah, too, and surprisingly, right now. Carapace stopping Mug, but actually with that cool and cooldown, they're free to use those abilities you were talking about. He doesn't have the counter, so he will take a heck of a lot of damage from this homing missile as well as that illuminate. So he's going to have to. I think the homing back. is actually going to be uh, destroyed on the way. No. Oh, yes! Ooh, wow. wow, that was so close. I mean, you have plenty of HP regen, but still, every little bit helps, still. especially when you're going up against a lane like this. Actually, a bit surprised to see Jarakar to pick up the Rocket Barrage level 2. Not surprised in that sense, but he's he ha really has to provoke Nyx to spike Carapace, because if he gets close to him only to get stunned himself, it's not really going to make any sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Definitely hard. He's actually really one of the harder heroes to counter in lane, I guess, because especially against two heroes who have Spells that can be seen before they actually hit you. Yeah, uh, top, we do see Chaos Knight lying in around 22, 23 last hits. Um, 
doing great. I mean, picking up his boots here in a second, I expect. Not much else to report. Not too much. I mean, they have the Sentry Ward just recently placed, actually only 15 seconds ago. Trying to zone out the Bounty Hunter, but he's long gone. Looking at middle lane, wants to help out Rubik, who, you know, already has that disadvantage, being 0-1 up against that Pudge here, but I think was just farming up, gonna be looking for that mechanism based on his items choice, I mean, could go something crazy like a four staff, but I do not believe so. Gonna be going for that, and yeah, just pretty much everything's going as a little bit of expected, except for with these uh, Radiant team kind of flanking up on the Pudge, I'm not sure if he knows exactly where people are, if he did, he'd be able to hook Moogle perfectly into the tower right now, but um, obviously yeah, I'm not having the vision. Not quite sure either, because he, I think he knows that somebody's around the area because of the missing bounty hunter, but he's playing really passive, as you see, but I think, yeah, he's going to move forward here in a second, and he's probably going to get a cut out of position. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks like the, the burst strike will be coming in from Moogle. They really want to go on this bounty hunter. All he has is Janata to add into it, but it may be enough. Enough auto attack him as this member comes out with a little bit of broad action from Rubik. Make sure they can secure the kill there, and yeah. Nice job. Good kill. Good pickup indeed. And Nico moving into the mid lane. He actually has his black hole now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Lesh as well. Ruby could get out of position. Probably in a lot of trouble now. Yeah, a lot of edict damage about to come forth, and just a couple auto attacks might help out. Uh, but no, there's just enough action from the Burrow Strike. Moogle pulling him back, and you can just see the limitation of that uh, cast animation of Diabolic Edict. He really, he, even with the landing of the uh, stun, he was still very far away. He couldn't just walk on top of him. He took a while to cast it, and with that Burrow Strike coming in, there's no way he could have locked down the Rubik, who is now perfectly fine bottling up and looking for the six minute rune spawn bottom, and maybe covered up by the Pudge, who was smoking up to try to grab as fast as possible. He could find Rubik out here, right here. This could be really bad for Rubik. He has a haste rune, could pursue as much as he wants to. He indeed will. Uh, Burrow Strike, or sorry, yeah, he gets the hook on Rubik, pops up nice. the member. Sanking not going to be coming anytime soon, so he's going to get that kill. And one clean, one v versus one kill, that's not what Rubik wants to see. Takes the Magikarp doing a little bit of action from Toons. I don't expect it'll change anything, but actually Toons just going to TP out. Oh my gosh, that Whoa, hook. Whoa, that's there so was, close. There was one little creep right in between. Uh, that would have been awesome if he landed that hook, though. That would, definitely. I'm surprised to see he did not go down to take the keep. I mean, he could probably go down and kill the keeper just with a simple haste rune. I mean, just running next to him with the, uh, the K or the rot. Mm -hmm. but just oh, yeah, we can see. Sanking dropping. So, one and three now in favor of the Hungry Magikarp team. Let's see if they can repeat their second win in a row or if it's going to switch back to Aquarium. Aquarium, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say Aquamarine as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's just a funny name that you don't really think about. And uh, if these guys keep on participating in these tournaments, we'll get a little bit more familiar with the teams and the players, but just kind of taken as it comes, and that's fine too. But and like you were saying, Bandino Magic are doing really well up on top. 45 last sets. Those are lane creeps. I mean, Enigma looks like he's doing pretty good too, but lane creeps do provide much more gold. And he's actually denying it up so that he doesn't have to worry about the creep equilibrium, but with these two range creeps, that will inevitably push out a little bit. So he's just doing what he can. But yeah, level 7, uncontested in farm, and he's going to be getting up some major items very, very shortly. So nice for him, and he'll be moving forward. I mean, really, I was just taking a look at the Bali, and the Bali is still really passive. The Gyrocarp is actually sitting at 7, 37 last and 16 to 9, so they're doing pretty well. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how the Radiant team plan on countering the, the Chaos Knight, because he's having 100% free farm. I mean, he has not been opposed more or less all game. So I guess they're counting on being able to team fight their way out of this. I don't know, what, what, do you, what do you think about that? I'm not exactly sure what their plan is right now. I mean, they pretty much the exact same story is about bottom lane. They started off with some aggression against Nyx, but after they couldn't get him down early on, they just kind of like, okay, we'll transition mid, we'll try to help out those that are lacking, but just running around in circles, they're not going to get much experience. If you look at experience per minute right now, or just experience graph, the Dire have a huge advantage right now. Bounty Hunter 195 doesn't even have track just yet. Going aggressive on the Enigma though, he will probably get a level up out of this kill, um, but he actually gets hooked into the tower and will drop down, so um, nice counter kill for the Pudge. Easy, easy. Definitely. If we take a look at the goal per minute graph, we do see Right now, we do see Chaos Knight sitting at 364, the absolute highest, and Ruby falling closely after with 328, uh, and Enigma Pudge afterwards. So, pretty, I mean, we do see Nyx all the way down at 113, along with Sanking. So, they're really getting zero farm right now. But, depending on how they want to roll out the Nyx, I guess he's not going to be the hardcore pub ganker that mo most people are used to, but he is probably going to be more of a supportive, just really. Focusing down people quickly with Zulti, and that's basically it. probably not going to get any items at all. Which works as well. I mean, it's definitely quite effective. Yeah. 
but all the same, one thing I'll mention real quick, actually, actually going on middle lane, they're trying to bring down Marcus Bob, but at Malefist, Hook, and the Split Earth going through, so now a lot of edict damage, they're popping off the Black Hole, want to commit to this, try to bring down KY, and he actually gets dismembered up, so he won't be able to spell steal it either, now nice ultimate coming out from Gyrocopter, trying to get some return kills, Pudge buys back, trying to teleport back into the fray, Lushrak dies to some Assault Barrage, whatever you want to call it, Rocket Barrage, and now my Hungry Magic are going to take a lot of damage from this rocket, but not going to drop down, instead it's going to be Toons, that does get dropped down from the Nyx Assassin, the Impale, as well as the Chaos Bolt going on through Marcus Bot looking for a hook. Long range, he could get have gotten it, but he didn't have the vision, given that it's nighttime for the time being. Yeah, that was interesting, because we do actually see that um, Enigma not going to drop to the hook from Missile. I was actually convinced that he was going to die, but Gyrocopter is actually only level level 1, and even though he's level 8. Because, he, I guess, to counter Nyx, he was just going for that flat cannon, just to counter, but I, that seems kind of foolish to me. Especially leveling up a fourth time, so now he's extremely strong at last hitting, but oh, big hook. not really. Great hook right there. Yeah, I, I honestly do not care much for that. I think he should have leveled up his homing missile a bit more, at least his, his rocket arrives, because that's really what makes Gyrocopter such a strong ganker in the other game, but I guess he's just going all out carry. He doesn't really care about the ganking aspect. One thing that I kind of like about the uh, flat cannon is that he is going up against that illusion carry, the chaos knight. Whenever he pops off the phantasms, he's not just hitting the main one; he's hitting all three and dealing a lot of damage to that. They just he generally can put out a lot of damage pressure in that regard. But other than that, yeah, I completely agree with you. He doesn't really have the gank potential that he normally would, um, and so yeah. the the momentum is all in favor of the diary here with this pudge going wild, sitting at six two and one and already ranking up one point in flesh shape since he's level ten. That's seven stacks for him, which is plenty of strength, HP attack damage, and they're going to put pressure out in all directions, including this tower, which is already down below half-life because of these Eidolons, but now Pudge was, well, thought he was going to get picked off, what happened to, or he teleported, just barely was able to teleport towards the bottom lane, now going aggressive onto the Gyrocopter, the ultimate does pop off as well as the Rocket Barrage, but I don't think it's enough to bring down Taste of Magikarp, instead, he's just going to take a fall all by himself, and not much happened in the middle lane in turn. No, I mean, that's... Things are not looking too good for Jared Cutter right now. He is dropped considerably in GPM, and he just died two times in a row without. I believe did he get a kill actually? Not quite sure if he, he has got. One kill. Yeah, he he has one kill, but he's two deaths. So yeah. So yeah, I mean, right now, definitely in favor of the Dire team. I mean, I don't really see the Radiance having any advantage right now, but it's, that could change very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chaos Knight just bought a straight armlet. That's an awesome item for this stage in the game. 12 minutes in, and he gets that much bonus HP and damage. I mean, he's just going to be uh, wreaking havoc, especially when he pops the armlet just before using Phantasm. He's going to be doing a lot, and uh, a Aquarium has to be very careful about this. Definitely. Um... Bottom tower. Let's see here if we take not really much to report right now. It's it's pretty passive in a in a sense, I guess. Probably one of the most passive games we had so far. Um, this could be the first tower drop, though. I think it is. Yeah, we do see gyrocopter rushing that straight that shadow blade straight off the boots. Mm -hmm. They're going very aggressive at this stage and trying to see what they can do about it. Um, but nevertheless, it looks like they're going to be able to hold it off no problem at all. And radiant are just kind of fearing for their lives right now. Definitely. Definitely. Okie dokie. So, what are we looking at here? Actually, Big Hook is what's coming on out, and that is the death of Rubik right off the bat. Nice blind coming out to try to help him out, but he's just too little too late. His life is so low, and... Uh, although the rocket will hit onto the Pudge as well as the Illuminate, not much to follow. Now Split Earth goes down onto Gyrocopter, but Sand King pops his Burrow Strike off, which allows Hungry Magic to pop off that black hole, get two in there. Uh, the Keeper Light will fall down to the Pudge Hook. Now Toons taking a lot of damage. Did he get recalled out? I don't know. Whatever happened, he just dropped down. And uh, yeah, Bounty Hunter fell, as well as Moogle to be cleaned up. Do you know what happened to Gyro right there? Yeah, he got... Uh... He was actually trying to uh, use his Shadow Amulet, which was, in my opinion, a really bad call in the middle of the fight because it has a 2.6 second fade time, and he basically used it, and then he got killed immediately after because he's just standing still not doing anything. Yeah, that's the central problem. Uh, that's really the problem with Gyro is that he, is, he has almost no health, almost no survivability, and he doesn't do all too much damage, so he is kind of weak. I mean, and we do see the Pudge just really just suffering through everything and just really wreaking havoc on the enemy team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an interesting yeah. engagement um, because the Leshrac actually overextended himself to try to put damage on the Gyrocopter, uh, which uh, Sand can capitalize on that overextension by using the Burl Strike. But by having Burl Strike on cooldown, that had absolutely nothing to do to stop that black hole. It got four seconds off, lots of damage. Bounty Hunter wasn't able to do anything. I don't know if they got but one track kill in that fight. 
and in the end they got the a bunch of kills throughout that entire process. So good action there, good timing and usage of abilities. And actually pinned down on bottom lane, Gyrocopter trying to juke through the trees, could not TP out with the Malefus stun and Nyx Assassin right on his tail and he's gonna drop he did drop down. And what really was special what was special about that uh, previous fight is probably that um they were too jumbled up. I mean, the Radiant team were so close together that Pudge basically hit everybody with his rot, and the ulti hitting Bounty Hunter and Keeper of the Light, where Pudge actually, like, just quietly lands up a hook and hooks Keeper of the Light out, kills him instantly. I was a bit surprised he didn't just go down the ulti Bounty Hunter to ensure him not getting out of there. Um, Ooh, Mark, Mark's really bot over center right a little now. bit. Yeah, he had the Invisor and walked into tower range, got telekinesis up into it. Now all this damage is coming on through, and actually he's going to take a fall. Uh, denies, wow. commits suicide just barely. Wow, very suicide. fortunate. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was just saying, the last fight was just really, they were way too closely together, right, in the team. Everybody getting hit by the rock, and uh, end up picking Barney Hunter off as well, and Sand King using a sandstorm in the middle of a fight, but actually ending up just dying, because he couldn't really, I mean, the rock is just going to kill him so quickly. Mm -hmm. Actually, Creeping Magic Guard can picked off here. He's going to take a fall. They did take the Tier 1 tower on bottom lane, but in turn, Keeper Light finished off the Tier 1 in mid, and they were able to pick up the Lush Rack after that Pudge kill. So that's a momentum swing in favor of the Radiant, but they still have so much ground to cover in that regard. I mean, experience advantage especially, 14,000 experience uh, disadvantage for Aquarium right now. Definitely. If we also take a look at the um, at the gold graph, I mean, we do see that the experience, the gold advance is actually over to 6,000 on the Dara team, which is quite a bit this early in the game. And one thing that you really don't want is Nyx Assassin to get um, over-leveled, comparatively speaking. He got shut down pretty hard in that 1 versus 3 and couldn't expect any less, but Tasty Magic Arc has kind of swum back. The fact of the matter is he is up to level 10, going to get that rank 2 Vendetta very shortly, and that's a nice little burst of damage to add on into it. If you look at experience per minute, it's actually the top 4 slots are all Dire Heroes. Let's track the only exception to that rule. And, yeah. Definitely. I mean, really, Nyx, is just, Nyx just really changes his game completely when he hits that level 2 Vendetta, mostly because of the... I mean, the damage output, but also the reduced cooldown and the fact that you, yeah, basically reduced cooldown. It's just, it's it's such a big jump in the skill. So looking forward to see if you can actually use it for anything. I actually have not seen him participate all too much in team fights as of now, but hopefully he will in the future. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, it looks like Bounty Hunter is looking for the drum build, had a little bit of utility and mobility to their lineup, but right now he's just so, so broke, right? He has uh, not even 3,000 gold to his name uh, and pretty much the same is on every single member of their team just they I wouldn't say that the dire team is completely overfed as far as items go I mean the mechanism is really nice <coughs> to start things off but the I would say that the radiant are really broke right now they don't have only pushed down one tower and they've lost a lot of team exchanges now it's gonna be a pick off on the uh, keep of the light and they we're also were able to take a tier one tower. second Sanky coming from behind we're gonna see a fight here in a second I'm pretty sure I don't even know if he can afford to do it. He has the smoke, but he's pretty much out by himself. He can flank if they decide to push on the tier 2. Um, but the real question is if they're going to bother with it. Yeah, here comes in a Sand King, but either he's going to run right into the Enigma, who has just picked up a Blink Dagger. Smoke has expired, so he is caught out. He does Burrow Strike, tries to do an Epicenter on combo onto the Enigma, but he has too much life, especially with that mechanism. Malifus stun goes out, so he just wasted his ultimate and his surprise potential. So they're not going to take the tier 2 because they're going to fall back and try to bring down Moogle, which I believe they can. All this damage coming out, all these AoE stuns, and he's going to take a fall. That was simply, I mean, that was just a grand example of bad positioning because Sand King got basically had to go all the way around here. Mm -hmm. well, initiation onto the tower on the tier 2. Dust is, does pop off, so Bounty Hunter is revealed. Nice blind, actually, nobody can hit him, but they don't need it. They can just finish the job. The As far as I know, Vendetta can't miss, and they just had enough magic damage to nuke to follow it up. So good initiation. Hooks on a creep, so that's not going to manage much. But the pressure just keeps on going. They can do whatever they want. They have an armlet, they have. Uh, the mechanism, which I, yeah, they have that available for the fight, and they don't have the black hole based on mana cost, but in general, they just have all this momentum, and it's really hard for the Radiant to do anything to come up with it, especially with tanking, not having that epicenter available, and I just realized he's only level 6. He is the lowest level in the game right now. Yeah, he's actually 6 levels below a Chaos Knight. I actually missed uh, Jared Copper taking out Nyx Assassin, I'm not quite sure how he did that. Pretty impressive with the Spike Carapace and all. Mm -hmm. Shadow Blade, pretty much. Uh, Nyx Assassin already popped his Vendetta in that fight. So when he jumped down to the tier 2 just to farm up a little bit, the Shadow Blade allowed him to close the gap. I didn't see it either, but it uh, seems pretty much like how that would go down. Yeah, I agree. So. 
So pretty much uh, what we've been looking at is just Pudge building up a lot of flesh heap sacks. His team has 19 kills. Of that, he's been near 16 of them. So he's been in the action all across the board. Uh, a lot of good hooks, a lot of good setup kills. He himself is 9, 3, and 6. And now he has a haste turn, so he is just a monster right now. Can buy his hood of defiance outright if that's what he opts for. But in general, he's just a something to be feared because he can start things off very, very effectively. And if you pull somebody out of position, Enigma can capitalize on that very well by when they teammates rushing to save them. There goes a blink black hole right on their face. So we'll see how that works out. Tier one is what they want to hold, but I don't think they can. Maybe pop off an illuminate and then fall back because my goodness, they have just so much uh, of an item advantage and level advantage on the Dire team here. Poke coming on out, Jogger Popper caught out. He does pop the Shadow Blade off with Dismember and some AoE will finish the job there. Track goes up on Pudge and now they're just drawing lines. These ones. Definitely the Illuminate is going to hit everybody now though. Very nice Illuminate, but we see Pudge just... He is so tanky, just with his massive amount of health, 17 stacks of Flesh Heap now and getting an extra level. So these guys are getting 26 free strengths right now. With the 20%, 12% magical resistance and the 15% resistance from the, uh, the cloak, so it's really big difference. Ooh, Bounty Hunter in trouble. So Sankey in trouble. Yeah, everybody's in a really poor spot right now. Um, that's just getting dropped down really, really quickly. Nice hook pulled out by Creepy Magikarp, uh, onto Creepy Magikarp, and he will drop down oh. from tower hit and the, uh, Fade Bolt as well. So good action from the Rubik, but not enough to really change the fact that they are in dire straits right now. Um, just every single bit. Pudge can run around, especially with that Ace Rune, and jump on anything he wants to. He has Boots of Travels, so much mobility, and like you were saying, so much effective health. Has that cloak. Wow, lands that hook too. Wall Cats caught nice. out and dead again. Very nice hook right there. Marcus bot MVP. But yeah, like you're saying, the yeah, flesh heap magic armor, um, right now, even with only rank 3, he's sitting at 43% magical damage resistance on his 2200 HP level, so Illuminate is just a breeze in the wind to him. He can just walk on through anything he wants, and they have all the... they could, don't have to stop, and there is some lot of damage coming out of Tasty Magic Arb, although vendetta up, he is in tower range, um, but it looks like he actually might be able to get out of there. Instead, wants to go aggressive on KY, that might be his death. No, again, the... Rocket is enough. Beautiful black hole. Holy crap. 100 Magic Carp getting a gigantic black hole off the hook. The rot going on through Sankey taking a lot of damage, but the Midnight Pulse will at least do some damage in turn. Mid the Reality Rift goes on to Gyrocopter, and his barrage will end prematurely. Marcus Bot does finally take a fall. Um, no Soul Ring available, so they cannot Malefice. I'm just trying to body block. Not going to happen. Instead, just auto attacking down, but the Reality Rift is in range. Enigma will pick up that kill, and Vivac's going out from all across the board. Gyrocopter wants in. He wants to try to clean this up. The stun will go on to Creepy Magic Carp, bring him extremely low. One auto attack from the Shadow Blade will do the trick. Instead, it's going to be Creepy Hungry Magic Carp that probably takes a fall. Marcus Bot, though, with those boots of travels, came in on the creep and is able to jump into the fray. His member is on cooldown, though. They are 2v1 versus the Gyrocopter. They earn the four second chaos ball. Oh, be, uh, unfortunate hook, but it's enough. <laughs> the stun duration is just long enough. If it was a two second stun, maybe the hook could have been the blunder that's kept Gyro alive, but no. They were able to finish the job there, and in the end, 28 to 13 for Dyer. That was a really good decision by Pudge to actually blink back into the fight again. Especially because Gyrocopter blinked in as well, and he managed to just die right after, so he is at a measly 4 and 7. Also, another thing, that was a great black hole by Enigma, especially because he ca actually caught Sankey and Bounty Hunter, but Sankey had actually, I don't know if you noticed that, he'd actually started firing his up his ulti less than half a second before. Wow. So he got caught right after he fired up his ulti, so his ulti was completely useless. He still had a cooldown on it, so... Yeah, I didn't catch that, that was, uh, but that's an amazing play from the Enigma. Made that fight for sure. Nice little gank coming out from Taste of Magikarp trying to burn down KY. The Telekinesis does no damage, though, so the Spike Carapace will not proc off. Trying to do some damage with Urn, but he's just going to have to fall back. Yeah. Geometry cycle right out on Pudge, that's gonna be big. Things are definitely looking to the favor of the Dire team right now. We also do see Chaos Knight massive farm, 6 and 0, 120 last tents, level 2, 14 with the BKB and the armament. Yeah, so he has no problem um, jumping into the fray here, a lot of HP from not only the passive strength of these items, but also the active of armlet, and of course magic immunity does not hurt at all. So they're going to be able to really just jump in and do uh, what they do best, which is uh, do a lot of damage. Um, the phantasms will be that much more durable. Uh, he has two illusions right now, we'll get three uh, with just one more level up. Um, they're going to be maybe looking to draw lines of Roshan. Uh, they are able to, if they can bring him down, the Agency Immortal will be 
essential for pushing down on these tier three racks or three two three towers and subsequently the racks as pushing uphill is rather difficult up against that keeper light with so much counter push and to gyro, a lesser extent gyrocopter as well so we'll see how that works out for them they're all grouped up one thing i will comment on is that nyx assassin loves to do quick easy pickoffs on heroes that are all by themselves so wisely radiant are grouping up especially against that pudge as well as the nyx but all the same, uh, one that's just biding time, and once Enigma's ulti comes back up, they can do Roche, they can push, they can do whatever they want, and that's what they're waiting for, and from there, it's going to be very difficult for Radiant to do anything. Really, just one interesting thing to note is that Huck is, uh, sorry, Punch has actually picked up a um, a gem now, so I don't think Bangahar actually knows this, so next time they meet, he's probably going to be in uh, deep trouble. Most definitely, and of course, up against the Shadow Blade Gyrocopter as well, can pick him off without too much trouble either, but now the Eidolons have popped off from the, actually they spawned the creeps, auto attacked Ancients a bit, and now they're going onto the Roche for a few seconds longer, and since they have split, you're actually able to make Eidolons of your Eidolons, so he's going to do that, and just use them to tank up the Roche very, very effectively. The Aquamarine knows that they're doing it, um, they don't really have wards, but it's just, they've been missing for quite a long time, and they have the control of the map that they figure that'll be the case, so here comes Edict damage, that'll burn them down a lot faster, but... I'm um, curious to see who's going to be picking it up. I presume the Chaos Knight, but it could be anybody. Actually, they gave the jump to CK, so probably him. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Especially since Chaos Knight becoming really more and more farm right now. I mean, he has the gem and the armor and the BKB and the Aegis. He's going to be hard to kill. He's almost level 16, so they're probably going to wait till he hits 16 with his uh, third level of Phantasm. It's going to be a huge difference. This might be a finishing fight. Let's see how it goes. The one thing I will mention is just now, Sankey picked up enough gold for his Blank Dagger, and that's really important, except that's only rank 1 Epi. If he had level 11, I think that they might be able to do something about this, since they have no Pipe of Insight. Um, but just the way the team fights have been going, I just don't know if it's going to be an option. However, Rubik did pick up a hook. If he can pull one hero out of position, it could be really good. However, even the CK, which would probably be the best option, has that Aegis and, of course, a BKB. So it's going to be very difficult to do anything. We do also see that uh, D Nick's assassin actually picked up his little one Dagon now. Oh, wow, very Keeper nice. Pulled out of position. The hook did not pull the pudge back into it. The force staff was not appropriate, but here comes Moogle with that blink dagger, the epicenter, and the yeah. burrow strike, but it's just not enough. Now here comes the Enigma pulling in three on the black hole. The only three remaining, they will get completely shredded here, and that's going to be a good game call for sure. Nail in the coffin on that one. That is actually, if this is a good game call, that is actually, we actually have the winners of the tournament. I mean, they, they might want to fight it out, but it's going to be, I can't imagine a way. I, 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 I agree. I can't really cannot see them come back from this. At least 33 and 13. Just uh, such amazing team play by both teams, of course, but really just by a Magic Carp. Really, really nicely done. Yeah, Hungry landed some big, big black holes. Blink, blink in, lock them down, and do so much AOE damage along with it. I was talking about the Pulse Nova, even if it's only rank 1. Actually, now so come in to pull down the illuminating. Uh, Keep it light. I don't know why I keep messing up his name. No big. Uh, yeah, they're gonna try. They're gonna do whatever they can to hold this off. But it looks like the racks have already fallen, and they'll be able to fall back immediately after. Yeah, the racks are actually not down yet. I'm not quite sure. They're not. Uh... Oh, they are gonna be down now, though. Mm, the burst strike does come out, delays them just a little bit. They want to finish it off. But yeah, oh. nice dag in action, burning down the sanking immediately. Uh, Venda or Shadowblade actually active on the gyro. He will be able to clean up a little bit, trying to bring down a tasty Magikarp, the Panda Burn on him, just to make sure he cannot pursue any further. Um, he's an auto attack, not going to get it. He's going to drop down. Uh, the range racks will live with 70 HP. I'm not sure why they didn't focus that, but they just want. Yeah. A little bit I was a little bit surprised. That I think there's just a bit of, bit of miscommunication because Parch, for example, started going back like 10 seconds before. The Radiant team actually came up again and started to fight. So, I guess just a little bit of miscommunication. They assumed they could get the racks, no problem. So they just—I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a huge difference though. But that's, it's a bit stupid to let them, to let the last one stay at so low HP. Mm -hmm. Looks like Chaos Knight's about to pick up a Heart of Taras, giving them so much survivability, um, sustainability with that out of combat heal, and of course a ton of damage. His uh, the illusions, the damage they reveal propagates directly from strength, and getting that plus 40 is really going to help them out in every every facet. Definitely. A little this courier. I'm just I'm just looking at parts again. He has such a fifty two extra strength. That's amazing. Such a strong passive that is. I'm actually a bit unsure. Do you know uh, if his if he um what's it called? If his flesh heap counts all the kills he's had, 
even if he gets it later on? Yeah, it's retroactive. So if you've gotten a dozen kills and then you skill it up at level 10, you're still going to get that. When you, As soon as you pick it up, you'll get all those charges retroactively. Okay, so. I wasn't actually sure. I actually thought that you had to pick it up and then get the kills afterwards. Because of, yeah, I don't know. That's why he's considered one of the more better steamrollers, because every single little bit of early game dominance he gets, as soon as he skills it up, which is the last thing you pick up because for that reason, uh, you'll get so much out of it. So works out yeah, really well for him. They're smoking up. They want to try to do some counter aggression. They have the Sand King Epicenter. It is rank 2, and they might actually be able to make something of it if they catch Dyer off guard, but the Black Hole will be up in a short time period. Only two seconds. It's up now, but the BKB is there. They have no way of interrupting this except for a Black Hole seal of their own. There's definitely going to be a battle of the ultimates. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Just get racks dropping really quickly. Calm before the storm. They're biding their time just a little bit, trying to not get counter initiated on, but they need to jump in shortly. Nope, it's going to be actually Reality Rift and a Pudge Hook simultaneously. The Yule Scepter goes up and he will take a fall. Now is the time for Sand King to jump into this, but he's currently not. Uh, he's sandstorming. I don't know. I guess they gave up. There he goes. Finally, he's jumping with the Sandstorm. He actually dodges the hook with the Blink Dagger, goes down on Burrow Strike, brings down the Leshrac, almost the Nyx, but Nyx pops the Magic Wand, has enough HP, and now with his Carapace up, he shouldn't have a problem getting out of there. And the other hand, it's going to be the Gyrocopter and the Rubik, which is already taking a fall. And with that, this member is going to be the death of the Sand King as well. So this is going to be the Rax on the bottom lane, possibly the top if they can transition appropriately, as Chaos Knight so good at just keeping on top of people. Good movement speed, good action, and he was able to bring down the Keeper of the Light on the back end of that. So Bounty Hunter, the only one alive. Not good. I feel I feel safe uh, in assuming that this is a, this is definitely the GG. I don't honestly believe that there's any way to come back from this. So uh, yeah, really well played. There we go. So that is good game well played. It is a. Am I correct in assuming that's a best of three? All right. Yeah, it is. Okie dokie. Well, that was. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted that glove, man. Glove. He really wanted that glove. But no, that was really well played. The um, in both games, Magic Art really started out with some good momentum. Um, they got heroes that benefit a lot from early kills, and they got them on the board. So that really helped out their team fight. And really, although Gyrocopter and to some extent Bounty Hunter are both really, really good in the late game stages, they just couldn't get there and didn't really stand a chance in order to do so. Nice black hole. Finally, a black hole steal from Rubik. Pulls in three. Yeah, he's gonna win this for him. Oh no, never mind. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun. And yeah, good. Well played for Team Magic Art. They do. Uh, to the winner go the victors, whatever. And uh, victor go the spoils, that's what I'm saying. And they will win the prize for that. Awesome action from them, and they definitely deserved it for bringing down uh, Aquarium in a 2 0 victory. I mean, really? Um, one sec, I'll just watch this right there. <laughs> Love the glove comments all the time. Um, Really, I mean, it was a it was a pleasure to cast this. Really well played by all the teams. Everybody's watching out there. I really, really well played by every team in this tournament. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty impressive though that uh, Magic Carp team, Magic Carp actually only ends up playing two games and winning the entire tournament. But that was just because of their actual their actual opponents never showing up. <laughs> so, but I mean, if they, they beat the luck, top team, lucky in that sense. Yeah, but if they beat the top team, they're top dogs. So definitely can't discount it just because of the number of games they played. They played very well. And this was definitely. a very and convincing they, they, one. They deserve this, definitely. I agree completely. So, um, uh, kind of doing the wrap up here as we move towards dropping down the final tier 4 tower along with the ancient. Um, it should be in a moment's time, but uh, as far as in individual casters, uh, I am Blaze Casting. And uh, I am uh, Ghost of the Smoke, also known as Accelerator. And this was uh, truly an honor to cast for you guys. We really hope all the viewers out there enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. So this was the It's Gosu Dota 2 Amateur Arena. And it was really fun. Hopefully we can do this some more. Um, but nevertheless, it was awesome. And we got the final prize was that. I'll do a quick shout out to all the viewers there, everybody who tuned in. Uh, either in VOD format uh, after the fact or now on the live stream. We appreciate you guys a lot. You guys make it possible. And we'll get this going to the score screen, and that'll be it. And um, we are planning on doing this as much as possible these sermons. We really hope the community uh, liked them so far, and we're hoping I get the next one up as soon as possible. So, um, <clears throat> yep, looking forward to doing it next time.
Fair enough. And if you don't mind, a quick plug of my stream. Uh, generally speaking, I can uh, I stream on both the owned and Twitch platforms under the name of Blaze Casting. I also have a YouTube channel and Twitter of those names. So if you want to check me out under those, feel free. And I do plenty of in-house and tournament games, including the SECS tournament tomorrow for Sunday. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, definitely, this is our first time casting together, myself and the Smoke. So uh, really glad that we were able to do this and had a lot of fun with it. Definitely. Uh, I feel like I should add that if anybody wants to check out my stream, I stream under the name Accelerator 3000. And uh, yeah, it's basically just a, a fun stream, just uh, lolling around with friends in Dota, but feel free to come in anytime. But yeah, really, really a big honor to cast us, and uh, me and David really enjoyed it. So uh, until next time. Indeed. Ah, fresh meat. Yep, so I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect out of this. A little awkward, but they're not pushing it. So uh, we'll play to Team Magikarp. And like I said, a shout out to you viewers. Uh, really glad that you were able to go in. And yep, from there we'll be disconnected out, out of the game. Sorry about the lack of scores group for this one. Hopefully not that big a deal. Um, but nevertheless, going on through. I'll switch this up real quick to you guys can see my lovely face for a moment's time as I kind of close out real quick moving my mic out of the way so I do like I said I give shout outs to all the viewers and everybody who jumped in on this really glad that you were able to tune in for this as it was a lot of fun for me to cast and uh, good to work with its gosu in general so I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors once more um, the peregrine giving up that gaming glove five of those two the winners there so glad they were able to do that it's a really cool little unit you can check it out it's got like programmable hotkeys you can do different hand mode gestures to play and up your game hopefully so try that check that out if you're interested in it otherwise i do want to give one last shout out to the other sponsors of it's gosu to make the tournament possible in general uh nos and razor so thanks for sponsoring the tournaments not only fueling my individual caster experience for today but also in general just allowing uh it's goes to do all these awesome tournaments and get the amateurs up there to hopefully get some showing for possibly some up and coming pro scene action there. So, uh, like I said, I'm Blaze Casting and I appreciate you guys for tuning in today.